Hello, in the second part of our video series about selling items on Amazon, we're going to show you how to create an FBA shipment using SellerChamp. So now that your FBA manifest is created, you need to start scanning some items into it. You'll notice that you're given item conditions, which you can select for each of the items you scan. Once you select a condition, a corresponding condition remark will populate next to it. These are auto-filled by default in your settings. You can change the default remarks, or you can even add new condition remarks if you have items that you'd like to have custom ones for. You'll then need to specify a quantity. You can scan the UPC off an item. You can enter its ASIN or even type by item name to search for it. You can also upload a bulk CSV file. You'll notice when I click the Upload button that there's an item template here that you can download and populate on your own. The only items you need for that are an ASIN or a UPC, a quantity, and an item condition. The rest of the items can be populated by our third-party data sources, but I'm going to show you that in another video. So I've got some items in my warehouse here that I need to ship off, so let's get started scanning in some UPC codes, or ASINs, or typing in. So I'm going to get started with my first item here. It is a new condition. I have a quantity of five on it, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And select one of the two SKUs I have for this item. And you'll see immediately that I'm given a, a list of shipping plans I can choose from. I can either select all three of these to create three shipments for this five, or I can modify the amounts slightly and refresh the plan. You see that it's actually given me a couple of different places now I can send it to. So this one here in Fort Worth is actually closest, along with this one in New Jersey, to the original amounts that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the shipment and close it. You'll notice that it's populated a, uh, a title. It's given me a picture. Uh, I've got the SKU that I'm using. It's showing as an FBA item. No prep is required. It's showing me the amount of sellers on Amazon for this in the offers part. And this is its sales rank on Amazon. It's showing me the average market price for this item. And this is the price it's suggesting I sell it for, which I can modify on my own. If I was using a CSV file, I could actually stipulate this price in that file as well. And I'm showing shipment one with my quantity and the box. Since I'd wanted to send five, I can go ahead and change that to five. Uh, when dealing with quantities, Amazon will give you a grace of 5% of the original number entered or 10, whichever comes first. So you'll notice it's okay with this one, but if I go and try to change it to something else, I'm gonna get an error message, okay? So there's that error message. We just talked about the five or 10%. So i go ahead and put this back to five and reload the page and we're good to go on this item. So I'm going to go ahead and enter another item that I have here, this uh, textbook. And I have two of these. And like new condition. And it's going to go ahead and give me a couple more places. Denver, Colorado. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And now I have a second shipment created. I'm going to get my quantity fixed here. And I'll reload the page. If at any point during the scanning process you see that uh, you think your box is going to get full, so on this box one here, if, if putting these five items in here actually filled my box up or almost filled my box up and I needed a second box, I could adjust this quantity slightly and then I could add another box by clicking plus add another. So a second box now is created on this first shipment and I can go ahead and put that extra one in it. And when I reload the page, you'll see that I've got two boxes now in my first shipment. And so everything else that I scan, if it gets put into this first shipment, it will start in box two. So it's just something that'll help you out when you know that uh, one box isn't enough. Okay, so let's keep scanning these. Uh, this one, I've got one more item here that I see that I need to put in this shipment. All right, 
so my next item is going to be in new condition and I've got eight of these so let me put these in and it's put it into my first shipment you'll notice that uh, still requires no prep so now this is also in box two all right so everything looks good here now a couple things to note if I had decided not to print my labels at all uh, for the FBAs I could actually print them from here I can still also print them in this label and pack section when we get there but everything's looking good here and I'm gonna go ahead and submit this to Amazon now and this will take just a little bit of time we'll come back and move on to the label and pack section All right, so now my items are showing that they have been submitted to Amazon I can move on and view my shipments at this point and I'll see both shipments the number of items and units in them that they're currently working and I can move on to label and pack here there's several different things you can do here in label and pack so this is showing you a view of both shipments you can actually filter by shipment so this is shipment one two boxes and shipment two one box and you can go back to all from this point you can even print all your labels again so print all labels we'll show you this you can even filter it by just the items that need labels if you needed to add more boxes here and keep updating quantities you can do that too or let's say you need to go back and add another item if you click more actions you can add more items or you can even click add items here and go back either one will take you there I've noticed here I do have one more item that needs to go so I'm gonna click that and take me back over to the add section and I'm gonna add these to another shipment they're new and I've got a quantity of four on them and I click add select the right skew and it went ahead and put this into my second shipment you'll notice there is some uh, required prep on this one it is going to need a label and it does need bubble wrapping so I'm going to go ahead and resubmit this to Amazon I'll jump back over to label and pack real quick uh, so I'm going to fast forward into that process for you okay we've moved back into the label and pack section now with our new item added we need to make sure that we have our labels printed for everything that we do need one thing to make note of this is a food item that we have here so it does require an expiration date so before we go forward let's make sure we have that if the expiration date isn't listed on some items you will get an error message and we'll just put this one in here and we'll have to make sure that that label is uh, printed for it we can get again do that and print all labels we can still filter that by only the ones that need it all right once we're sure that everything here is as it should be we can go ahead and click finish all and this is going to submit and start uh, sending that box content information to Amazon and we'll click finish all and it will load up into the shipping section here now that we're into the shipping section you'll see this is uh, shipment one of two we're showing our two boxes here it's again giving us the option to auto upload the box content info or to do it manually through seller central and you're getting the choice of using boxes or pallets if you need to use pallets for much much larger shipments you will have to do that through seller central at the moment since uh, they require a freight company to be selected and to come pick them up but then we're going to move on to our boxes now using all our third-party data the weight of each of the items was calculated and put into each of these boxes for all the items that are supposed to be in them so this is a total weight of all the items that should be in box one so it's not going to account for your shipping um, supplies obviously uh, the box and the packing and so forth so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change these uh, quantities to what they uh, should be after weighing the items and then put the dimensions in so I'll fast forward on that for you so I've gone ahead and populated these for you and once I'm sure that everything looks good I can click save changes and it will start to calculate the shipping cost we do use UPS um, that's the one that's approved to use through our API uh, if you did need to use another service like uh, FedEx for instance you you have to do that through FedEx at the moment 
Uh, but we are working on that configuration. It'll probably be done at some point soon. So let this calculate. I'll be right with you on that. Okay, so now you see that our shipment information has been successfully saved and it's giving me a shipping cost. I can go ahead and accept that shipping cost now. And it's processing that and getting my shipment finished up. And my item is set. And I can print my shipping label now. And it's going to give me both labels that I need to go ahead and print. And I can make sure these boxes are closed up and put those two labels on them. And I can move on to my next shipment. And I can proceed with this shipment exactly the same as the first. When I'm done, that will finish this shipment to Amazon. And you can just label your boxes and ship them off. And that's how you create an FBA shipment using SellerChamp. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to your SellerChamp YouTube channel for more exclusive content.